Hello everyone, welcome to day 29th of March Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. Today's solution would be 634th video of the Lead Code Daily Challenges that we have been solving from past one and a half years. And the question that we have in today is find the duplicate number. Here in this question we are given an array of size n plus 1. Also it is told that all the elements will be in the range of 1 up till n inclusive. That simply signifies that one number will be repeated twice in this input array. What we need to do? We need to identify the duplicate number that is present in this array. Also, the question states that you should not solve the problem without modifying the nums array and you should only use constant space to come up with the algorithm. So these examples are pretty easy to understand here. The duplicate element is 2 and this is what we need to return. I'll be solving this question using four different approaches. We'll go from the naive approach to the most optimized approach. And let's get started with the presentation that I have created for this. Also, in case towards the end of the video, do you have any feedback or queries? Feel free to ping me on Telegram group or Discord server of Coding Decoded. Looking forward to seeing your messages. Now let's get back to the PPT. Find the duplicate number, lead code 287. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. So let's get started. Let's assume you're in an interview and the question is given to you. The example is in front of you. The naive or the basic approach that comes to everybody's mind is to sort this array up. So when we'll sort this array, what do we get? 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. And now we can use a, a single pointer and check whether the current element happens to be equal to the next immediate element. If it is, then we identify the duplicate element. Otherwise, if it is not, we keep on iterating through the entire array. The time complexity of this approach is order of n log n. Why n log n? Because you have sorted this input array up. The space complexity is constant time. Can we improvise this? The answer is obviously yes. Let's walk through the second approach. Now the interviewer wants you to reduce the time complexity. How can we do that? What we can do? We can simply create the frequency map. And using that frequency map, what we will do, we'll, add, we'll store the frequency of each element that is present in our input array. For example, we have 1, we have 2, we have 3 and 4. We'll iterate through the entire array and we'll store its, the frequency of each and every element. The frequency of 1 is 1, the frequency of 2 is 2, the frequency of 3 is 1, the that of 4 is also 1. And now we'll once again iterate through the array and check where the frequency is greater than 1. You'll be able to find that at 2 and that becomes your answer. So this is your another approach. Time complexity of this approach is order of n because uh, you are iterating through the array uh, linearly and the space complexity is again of order of n because you are using extra space. Now this frequency based approach can be replaced by sets. So you can create set and uh, you will keep on adding elements onto it. As soon as you see that an element is already present in that set which you are trying to add you simply say it's a duplicate element for example you see one so you add one to it you see three you add three to it you see four you add four to it now you see two two is not part of the set you add two to it and when you are iterating through the last two you see that two is already part of that set that means it's duplicated again the time complexity of this approach is order of n the space complexity is again order of n can we improvise it further the answer is yes now let's talk about the third approach where the time complexity would be the order of n and space complexity would be constant time. Also we are taking an exception here to what was specified in the question. We will be modifying the input array. To understand it better let's get through the example. So we have the input array as 1, 3, 4, 2, 2 and here in this approach we will be exploiting indexes as frequencies. So let's get started in the first go what will I do I will simply reduce each and every element by 1 so that the elements lie within the range of 0 till n minus 1. The indexes and the values come in parity with each other. Now let's start the iteration. Here the index that you see is 0. So what do you do? You check the corresponding value. The value is again 0. So you jump onto that value which is 0 and you simply negate it up. So you now we have minus 0 over here. Let's proceed ahead. And this simply signifies that 0 has been visited or seen in your range. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 1. So what element do you see? At 1 you see 2. So you go to 2, you jump onto 2 and you simply negate it up. 
that simply signifies that two has been visited in the past let's proceed ahead next we see is two itself so what value do you see you see minus three over here so since it's already negative you take the absolute value and let's go to three and we go to three and we simply negate it up since uh, we are negating uh, the value at three th the third index that means uh, three has also been visited in the past now let's proceed ahead next we see is three itself and at three the value happens to be minus one we take the absolute one and we jump onto the first index the first index happens to be this one and we simply negate it up that simply signifies that one has been seen so far now comes the most interesting case so you see four at four what value is it you see one so you jump onto one this time we are going back to one and what do you see here now you again tried negating it up however the value is itself in negative in nature that simply signifies that one was also visited in the past as a result of which it's a duplication scenario this is the way when we can say that one as an index was duplicated so since we subtracted one initially from our input array we'll again add one to our current index one plus one gives you two and this becomes your answer however the trick here is we have exploited indexes for keeping track of frequencies and we have modified the input array is there any other solution where modification is not at all needed the answer is yes which is that approach fast pointer slow pointer is the way to go we will be exploiting the property of cycle detection in a linked list to solve this question how can we apply this algorithm onto this problem let's walk through it so here let's take the same example that was specified in the question we have elements as 1 3 4 double 2 and let's start the iteration at the 0th index what element do we see we see 1 here and from 1 where is the next connection going let's go to 1 and check there is a connection from 1 to 3 value so let's create a node starting from 1 and it is connect getting connected to the third value and from 3 where is the next connection going from 3 we have the connection to 2 so let's create from 3 a new node till 2 from 2 where is the connection going from 2 the connection is going till 4 so we have 4 over here and let's go to 4 and from 4 where is the connection going it is going till 2 so from 2 we from 4 we have a connection going till 2 and what is the most interesting part if you carefully observe the starting point of your cycle in your linked list is a point of duplication. There could have been more elements involved at the intermediary steps. However, what we are interested in? We are interested in finding out the first position where the cycle is getting started, which is 2 and that becomes your answer. This is a very famous interview problem based on the concept of linked list. We have already solved it plenty of times in the past. I am attaching its link in the description below do check that video out if you want to mo know more about cycle detection in a linked list problems now let's get back to the coding section and conclude this approach so here for the very first time we are seeing the practical use case of cycle detection in a linked list concept in general and it's slightly difficult to think on these lines in an interview unless you you haven't done or read similar questions in the past but so don't get disheartened if this approach did not click you in the first go we all are in the learning phase to conclude it further let's quickly walk through the coding section and let's quickly find out how easy and simple it is to write the code here i've taken created two pointers slow and fast both of them pointing to the same location which is nums of zeroth index so in general uh, in cycle detection and link list problem remember slow pointer moves by a single position fast pointer moves by two positions so I've, I've added a do while loop here because i want this operation to run at least once and i'll keep on moving ahead till the time my slow pointer is not equal to the fast one with each iteration my slow pointer takes one step and fast pointer takes two steps so slow equals to nums of slow and fast is equal to nums of fast is a first step and again you are indexing it using the nums array that means it is taking two steps once we are, we are done with this we are able to identify whether there is a cycle in the system or not so it's it's again the same concept 
once this loop breaks what do we do we reset the slow pointer from the starting position and again we keep on iterating till the time my slow pointer is not equal to the fast one and as soon as they become equal that point becomes your point of starting of the cycle in your linked list so it's again the same concept exactly same formula that we use to solve the linked list problems uh, and this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it the time complexity over here is order of n and the space complexity over here is order of 1 i hope you enjoyed today's session if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question signing off your friend your mentor your catalyst in this journey of yours sanchit rudeda take care sayonara